Welcome to the Strategic Management Accounting course, where we teach the value-adding steps and processes necessary to execute strategy. Whether you are just starting up or looking to grow your business, then this course is for you. With your host, Dr. Neil O'Connor. But there are five big mistakes, and actually you know all about them already. Look, I'm so excited because, you know the first one, strategy maps, you know all of that. A lot of organizations fail to do that. And why? when they fail to do that, what's their big mistake? The big mistake is they actually lose the G in the G-O-A-L. Remember the goal? They actually lose that chance to develop the culture of the organization, all right? Number two, then they lose the chance to actually provide a framework for finding measures. Remember you did that with the Maxim's Cafe? You remember you did that with the coffee shop? Remember the first step was, let's find a strategy. Second step, oh, let's put some measures on the strategy that we think work. Are you with me here? This is step one, step two. But a lot of organizations say, oh, let's not worry about that. Um, you know, we're just serving coffee. It's not a worried about, we're not worried about if there's a particular value chain associated with a customer experience or the best coffee or the efficient operation all right we, we just throw them all together and now let's just think of measures can you imagine the problems thinking of me look at all the measures that we came up with for that coffee shop okay but once we all agree that oh we want to do we want to emphasize this very clearly then we could actually start measuring that to really get some excitement about how that strategy is going. You with me here? All right. So a lot of companies fail to do that. Well, next they fail to validate the links. Validate the links. Aha, you know, you know that. We already did that in chapter four. Remember chapter four? Remember the Hilton Hotel example? Do you remember the, uh, I think you remember that. Validating the links. You remember that because the Hilton Hotel example was uh, a great example where some professors, one of them from Cornell University, they looked at the uh, sensitivity, sensitivity, all right? And the book says accuracy, just to make sure we don't have any uh, uh, misunderstanding here. And then, and then he have here is reliability, right? Reliability, what do you mean? We hit the same point again, 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 okay? Here, we're actually trying to hit exactly what we really want, okay? But may not be the same place all the time. Are you with me on that? And what the, prob the big problem with this type of measure was that we did not, what? We did not believe the measure. Why? Ah, oh, because in Chapter 5, what happened in Chapter 5? Not human, not uh, behavioral displacement, not control, not costs of uh, implementing controls, okay? Uh, not excess slack. What was it? It was gamesmanship, okay? Any element of gamesmanship, then you actually lose total confidence with the whole measurement. You don't trust the person that's doing the measuring, right? So you didn't believe in the measure here, you believed in the measure, but you didn't feel that your role in the organization was connected to the output. So you didn't feel that you can influence, remember? And so that's what we did in chapter four, was show you that, well, hang on, we can make a linkage between belief and influence by saying that this is a lead indicator of that. And so now this one you don't believe, and now you do believe because you know it's gonna be related to that in the future. And this one that you don't influence, now you feel you do influence because in the meantime, you can influence this measure here. Okay, it's kind of like you, you can influence this measure of customer satisfaction and you believe in this measure, why? Because you know it's related to a future accounting sales. Remember? So the hotel customers, when they're more satisfied, when they're more likely to recommend other customers come and come back, the professors got all the data and found that, oh, six months later, 12 months later, oh, that was related to increased sales. So as that varied, 
the future sales result varied. That's what we mean by that's what we mean by validating the links. And so we've already done that, right? So you know that that's a big mistake that companies made. So you know what we're doing. Okay, next. And do we know that for sure? Well, 23% of companies surveyed in this in this report do it. And guess what? Those 23%. They had higher ROA, higher return on equity. <gasps> ah, now we've got chapter 10. So far we've done chapter 4, we've done chapter 5. Now we've got chapter 10. We've got concepts coming out of this book, left, right and centre. All right, so we've got these measures here coming up to just show that there's a difference between companies that do validate the links and those that do not validate the links. All right, let's go on to the next one. Avoid overload. I love this one. I actually love this one because my friend Rafe Lawson from USA, he did a survey with his colleagues of lots of companies around the world and big question, how many measures do you track, how many measures do you have? And some of them said, well, 500 to 1,000, uh, do I believe that? Oh, more than 1,000, wow. <laughs> I wonder how many of them are outputs and inputs and process. Can you imagine the confusion going on there, right? All right, so the big question I have for you is, this is your next job. This is your next job because one of you, maybe more of you, how many of you want to work in an accounting firm? I didn't think so. Okay, so there's another type of job that you could work for, and that is a bank. You could be a customer service officer. What do you think of that? Right, so here's a real bank, real customer service officer. They used to call them tellers, bank tellers. But you know, you don't want to be saying, oh, I'm a teller, oh, what are you? Oh, I'm an investment banker, yeah, all right. But no, but now it's, oh, I'm not a teller. I get promoted to customer service officer. <laughs> oh, great, but I still have to sit behind the bench and give money out to the customers and take their money, all right. And so you can imagine, when was the last time you went to a customer service officer in a bank in the last 12 months, anyone? You've been, okay, so you, can you imagine that, uh, you know, they've got in the back of their mind, they've got to meet all of these 15 items when they're actually serving you, okay? Uh, satisfied, make you, do I make you feel like they appreciate your business? Appreciate your business, come again, we love you. Okay, uh, process your transaction quickly, have the ability to handle your request, wait time acceptable, Okay, one of my students from last year did an internship in Hong Kong and I asked her over the over the summer break, oh, what's the big difference between Singapore and Hong Kong? She said, oh, the similarity is that we've got queues in Singapore. We also have queues in Hong Kong, but the queues in Hong Kong go four times faster than in Singapore. All right, it's very interesting. All right, so that was one perception of differences between Hong Kong and Singapore. All right, so uh, address you by your name. I uh, give you his or her undivided attention, okay? Not playing their iPhone while they're actually serving you, all right? And so there's a lot, all right, here's a big question for you very, very quickly, all right? Just think, you're this teller. How many of you want to work for a bank like that that has 15 items to evaluate your performance? How would you feel? Put your hand up if you feel a bit under pressure here. A little bit, yeah, I didn't see that, right? Okay, well, get used to it, okay? A lot of organizations are starting to measure more and more and more. All right, now, here's the real stuff, okay? So this bank brought in the consultants to make the measures better, all right? So here's the big question I have for you. Is this the result of the consultant's intervention or was this a problem that the consultants were faced with and then they're asked to actually make even a smaller number of measures. Put your hand up for the for the second result. That is, this is what uh, the consult this is before the consultants. Okay? The other scenario is this is a result of what the consultants did. In other words, before this they had even more measures. Hands up who believe that there was more measures than this. Okay, hands up who think that uh, the consultants came in after this and actually made it better. <coughs> Not many of you. Okay, the first scenario is correct. There were more measures. How many more? 15. Hands up for 20. Hands up for 20 measures. Let's have a guess here. Come on, I want you all participating. All right, you're here at this auction. Do we have 20? Do we have 20? 
20? We've got 20. You moved your hand. There's 20, 20. All right. <laughs> do, we, do we have 25? Anyone for 25? CK, you just moved your hand. There's 25, 25, 20. Ah, 26, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30. We've got 30 here. 30 here, 40, 40, 40, 40. Anyone here? 40, 50, 50, 50, 50. 60, 60, 60, 60. 70, 70, oh, 70. Uh, 80, 80, 90, 90. Okay, that's very quick. That's how auctioneers work. So when you're at an auction, just keep your hands behind your back, okay? All right, it's very easy, all right? So, uh, true, true case, there were 90 measures, 90. Then the consultants came in and then they came up with these 15. All right, so uh, long story short, bit fatal mistake, a lot of companies, too many measures. All right, here's me teaching you how to do measures. I'm saying don't have too many. All right, my re um, anyone that comes to you and wants to have more measures, just try and work on what is your big decision, what is one measure that will help make that decision better. That's all you have to do. That's the best advice you can give. All right, right targets, you know that. Wow, look at this, we're going through the whole textbook, chapter eight. You know that. Isn't it amazing the mistakes that companies make are all in the chapters that we've covered this semester. Wow, it's like a mini uh, summary. So you've seen this before, happy versus focused. You know that, all right? So you know about time, and you know about insurance companies. You know the problem that they make here. What's the big problem? Well, here's the situation for companies with lots of customers. Invariably, 10 or 15% of the customers are unprofitable. That is, they spend, they cause a lot of time. They ring up, they complain a lot. They don't buy very much, but they, they're a customer. Okay? And what insurance companies do, and one of my friends works for a large company, they do analytics in Melbourne, and they get all the customer base to find out what are the demographics of the customers that are profitable, what are the demographics of the customers that are unprofitable. And so they want to have that feed forward into the future sales process to try and avoid these type of customers and to spend more time looking after these customers. Okay, because this is the future. <laughs> That's not the future. These customers here, they're unprofitable. All right, so FedEx learnt about that too. And they sent a, a letter out to their small business customers over 10 years ago and said, oh, we're going to charge you $100 fee uh, for all, minimum $100 fee for shipments. And so what the small businesses say? Well, we're not going to do business with you. FedEx said, okay, that's okay. And guess what? FedEx profits went up or down? Went up, of course, because they lost their unprofitable customers. Okay, so big point here. When it comes to target setting, all right, it's not about making 100% customers happy. It's about making just 80% because you will go out of business trying to make that last 20% happy. Okay, so let's be very business savvy here. Finally, measurement, weighting, and updating. Short story for that, HTC, when they're measuring their suppliers, it's in the case study we did with the Harvard Business School. They have different weights for five measures, TDQSC, okay? Technology, 8%, service, 7%, quality, 30%, 25% delivery, 20% on cost. I think that adds up to 100%. But notice, different weights on each. Quality is very high. Technology and service, very, very low. They're different weights. So it's not about having the same weight on every measure. So getting that weight right is very, very important. And updating. Updating. The problem is sometimes some measure update every week, some measure update every month, some measure update every six months. And then at any one time, the whole system's out of balance because they're not always up to date at the same time. Okay, because five months down the track, those six monthly updated measures are five months old. You with me here? You see? And so you get a bit of out of sync. You know, the balance scorecard is the notion of balance, but they become in balance. So there you are. There's my five, there's my five mistakes in seven and a half minutes. Thank you.